Hey guys, what's up? Here I am again. Today we're going to talk about something that's making a splash in the retro gaming community. The Trimui Brick. Which costs $50 and the link is in the description. Um, I used to have the Smart Pro, but I sold it. So I know what it can do and you know, let me tell you the reality uh, without sponsorship. Essentially, the Brick is a more compact and portable version, while the Smart Pro offers a bigger screen and larger battery capacity. The Brick also adds some customization features that are not present in the Smart Pro. For those who are just getting started, the Trimu Brick is a portable console that is attracting a lot of attention. It's small, fits in your pocket, and promises to run a whole host of classic games. But does it deliver what it promises? That's what we're going to find out today. We're going to do a complete performance analysis of this little device. We'll see what it's capable of, which consoles it runs well on, and where it falls short. The Trimui Brick was designed to be an affordable option for those who enjoy retro games and want to take that nostalgia anywhere. It comes with an all-winner Aone 133 Plus SOSC, which is no power monster, but promises to be able to handle many classic games. So, if you're thinking of buying a Trimui Brick, or you're just curious to see how it does, stay tuned, and we'll break it down in the next few minutes. Shall we? The heart of the Trimui Brick is the all-winner IH Own 133 Plus SoC. This chip may not be the most powerful on the market, but it was chosen to balance performance and energy efficiency. Speaking of the CPU, we have a quad-core ARM Cortex F 2.8 GHz. This means it has enough power to run emulators for older consoles just fine. The GPU is a Power VR running at 660 MHz. This combination should do the trick for most 2D games and some lighter 3D ones. As for memory, the brick comes with 1 GB of LPDDR4X RAM. It's not much, but it's enough considering the purpose of the console. Internal storage is 8 GB eMMC, but don't worry, there's a micro SD card slot of up to 256 GB for you to fill with ROMs. Now the additional features are quite interesting. We have Wi-Fi up to the N standard and Bluetooth 4.1 for connectivity. The battery is 3000, which should give you between 3 and 5 hours of playtime. And look how cool it is. The brick has RGB lighting and a removable, customizable backplate. You can make the console your own. Finally, we mustn't forget the screen, which is 3.2 inches IPS with a resolution of 1024 by 768. It's compact, but the pixel density is good, so games should be crystal clear. Overall, the Trumui brick is no power monster but it seems to have been designed with care to offer a good retro gaming experience. What do you think? Let's see how it performs in practice a little later on. Now let's see how it fares in terms of design and construction. And of course, this is just an impression based on what I'm seeing on video. The first thing that catches the eye is the retro look. Brick doesn't give a damn about the trend for thin consoles. It really embraced that classic Game Boy vibe with a very compact vertical format. The body of the console is made of plastic, but it's not your run-of-the-mill plastic. The texture is nice, it feels good in the hand, and doesn't slip. The edges are rounded, which makes it more comfortable to hold. The buttons click satisfactorily, they don't get soft or make that annoying noise. <laughs> Speaking of ergonomics, the brick surprises. Even though it's small, it fits well in the hand, the controls are well positioned, and you can reach everything without juggling your fingers. Of course, if you have very large hands, you may feel a little uncomfortable during longer sessions, but for most people, it should be fine. The 3.2 inch screen is protected by tough glass. It's not Gorilla Glass or anything, but it'll stand up to everyday use just fine. The overall finish is neat, there are no burrs or anything badly fitted. Now, the highlight of portability, this thing is really small. It's easy to slip into your pocket. It only weighs 159 grams, so you can carry it around all day without even feeling it. 
it's perfect for those who want to kill the urge to play a retro game on the bus or during a break at work. A nice detail is the removable backplate. You can customize it, change the color, add a sticker, it's up to you to make the console your own. Overall, Tremui Brick got the design right. Now let's move on to the computational side of it, leaving all that button stuff aside. Let's now check out the Trimui Bricks benchmark results and see how it fares against other similar devices. In the meantime, I'll let you play some games on the screen. This will give us a clear idea of what to expect in terms of performance. The Trimui Brick, equipped with the all-winner Aoni 123 Plus SoC, shows the following benchmark results. These figures indicate that the Brick is in the range of entry-level devices focused on less intensive tasks, such as emulating older consoles. When we compare the Truni Brick with other portable devices in the same category, such as the Miu Mini Plus, we see that it is competitively positioned. Devices with similar specifications generally perform adequately for emulation up to the PlayStation 1 era, but can struggle with more demanding platforms. The benchmark scores provide an overview of what to expect in terms of performance. This chip is sufficient to emulate consoles up to the PlayStation 1 without major problems. This includes NES, SNES, Game Boy, and other 16-bit and 32-bit systems. For more demanding platforms such as Dreamcast or PSP, performance may be limited. More complex games may not run smoothly or may require adjustments to the emulator settings. Outside of emulation, the device should cope well with basic tasks and less demanding games. All in all, the Trimui Brick is a solid choice for anyone looking for a portable console focused on retro games. But to confirm this, let's see how it performs in practice. Eventually, I'll put the Smart Pro on the screen as it's the same hardware in order to better represent it. The Trimui Brick does very well with P-Zone emulation. Most games run smoothly with very few frame rate or sound problems. Classics such as Crash Bandicoot, Final Fantasy, and Tekken 3 run without stress. The screen does a good job of enhancing the graphics of the time. Looking at the Nintendo DS, things get a little more complicated. 2D games such as Pokemon or Castlevania run well. But titles that use the touch screen a lot, such as Brain Training, look a bit strange on this small screen. Heavier 3D games may experience some performance drops. Trimui Brick doesn't have a touchscreen. The N64 is always a challenge to emulate, and Brick is no different. Simpler games like Mario 64 or Pokemon Stadium run reasonably well, but titles like Perfect Dark or Conker's Bad Fur Day can suffer from frame rate drops and audio problems. Unfortunately, the Dreamcast is already asking too much of our Brick. Some lighter 2D games will work, but most 3D titles will run very slowly or not at all. If you want to play Shenmue or Sonic Adventure, you'll have to look for a more powerful device. PSP emulation is a little better than Dreamcast, but still far from ideal. 2D games like Patapon or Loco Roco run well, but 3D titles like God of War or Final Fantasy will suffer a lot from frame rate drops. The Saturn is notoriously difficult to emulate, and the brick doesn't have enough power to cope. Most games will run too slowly to be playable, if at all. Unfortunately, fans of Panzer Dragoon or Knights into Dreams will have to look elsewhere. Overall, the Trim Mui Brick offers a solid experience for games up to the PlayStation 1 era. The small but clear screen, responsive controls, and portability are all plus points. Performance on older systems is excellent, however it's important to bear in mind the limitations of the hardware. If you're looking for a device to emulate more recent consoles or complex 3D games, the brick may not be the best choice. But if your focus is on reliving the classics of the 80s and 90s, this little guy can be quite a companion. It's clear that the Trimui brick really shines in 2D games. The performance is consistent, the graphics are clear on the compact screen, and the gameplay is impeccable. For 3D games, performance varies greatly. Titles from the P-Zone and N64 run acceptably most of the time, but don't expect perfection. 
games for more advanced consoles, such as Dreamcast, start to push the limits of the device. Overall, the Trimwee Brick proves to be quite a companion for lovers of classic 2D games, offering a solid experience for some lighter 3D titles too. Just don't expect miracles in more demanding 3D games. We've reached the final stretch of our Trimu Brick review, and it's time to tie up everything we've seen. The Trimu Brick proved to be a compact and well-built portable console with that retro charm reminiscent of the classic Game Boy. Running on an average chip, it offers modest performance, but can handle most retro games. The screen is clear, and the controls are responsive, which guarantees a good gaming experience. When it comes to emulation, the brick does well, with consoles up to the PlayStation 1 era, and runs smoothly, and even the Nintendo DS does well, especially with 2D games. Now, when we move on to systems like the N64, Dreamcast, PSP, and Saturn, things get complicated. Some lighter games work, but you can't expect miracles. So, if you're thinking of buying a Trimui brick, here's a tip. If you're a fan of retro games from the 80s and 90s, especially 2D games, go for it. The device offers good performance, is super portable, and doesn't weigh down your pocket. However, if you're looking to emulate more recent systems or complex 3D games, it might be worth considering other options, even if they are a little more expensive. It will run SX64, Dreamcast, PSP, and Saturn, but with average performance in many cases. The brick is perfect for those who value that extreme portability of being able to play their favorite classics anywhere. Just be warned about the battery. With a capacity of 3,000, it can handle a few hours of gaming, but if you're an addict, you'll need to keep an eye on the sockets. At the end of the day, the Trimui Brick does what it promises well, to be an affordable, portable console to kill the nostalgia for retro games. It won't replace more powerful emulators on your PC or cell phone, but it offers a unique and nostalgic experience that many people will enjoy. If you enjoyed this content and want to stay up to date with everything about portable consoles, emulation, and video game classics, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and activate the bell. That way you won't miss any new videos. Leave that naughty like to help the algorithm spread the word about retro games. And in the comments, I want to know which portable console would you like to see analyzed here on the channel? Or what classic game deserves a special video? Thanks for watching, guys. Keep playing your favorite classics, whether it's on True Movie Brick or any other console. See you in the next video.